Hi everyone, I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan and today we're going to be doing Analyze Your Games with a Grandmaster. We have a few, couple of more minutes I guess. Hi everyone, hope you've all read up on some chess history for today's trivia question. Is that you, Ridima, or is it Abhi? Yay, it started, yes. While we're waiting, me this time, says Ridima, okay. While we are giving it a couple of more minutes before we get started, um, I mean, this is a session that is meant to be for our students specifically. And I wanted to make sure, you know, I interact mainly just with our students, maybe unless one or two games or maybe even more, depending on um, the kind of games we get and, uh, and how fast we can go through the games. Okay. It's like 15. We're going to wait a couple of more minutes and then we'll get started. I guess while we're waiting... I am going to try to solve a fun puzzle that one of my students gave me. And maybe you guys can help me solve this too. So let me set this position up and we can probably try to do this for like five minutes or maybe even less. It was a very interesting position. Maybe you guys can help me too. So she goes to a class where she was given this position and it is supposed to be a checkmate in three on the black king. I don't know if anyone can help me with this. Checkmate in just three moves. Huh. So who wants to help me? Give me the first move. So black has only a king on h4, nothing else is there. White has all the pieces, but we have to figure out a way to checkmate in three moves exactly. What I'm worried about is this king is going to be, oops, I'm looking at the wrong screen. I have to go here. What I'm worried about is this king is going to be running back. By the way, I know a lot of you have your parents' name in your um, chat. So I might not know exactly who you are, even though I do know some of you, but I might not be able to place you correctly, but we'll, we'll figure it out, okay? So the king, um, this is not a draw. This is not a draw. I'm hearing someone in the comments saying it's a draw. It's not a draw. The king can go back and then run further back. I guess that's what we need to make sure we stop. Let's see. Maybe I can try e4, the most natural one, blocking this diagonal. All right. Ridima has g3. I'm going to try to play g3 check. Okay. Let's try g3 check. What if I move the king back here? I don't see how... We would be able to checkmate this in two more moves because look at that i'm running back with all of these squares behind me so that's going to be a little difficult i'm guessing Rudima. so when to go back the one i was talking about was e4 um king goes to g5 i think queen goes to f3 maybe but then the king runs back and there's no way i can checkmate in the next move d3 or d4 let's try d3 or d4 okay so we got this whole diagonal ah so this makes a lot more sense i like this because now we could go here and control this whole diagonal right i like this let's try d4 so the king has to either go to g4 or h5 yeah let's try either one ah i think i might have figured out the answer let's say the queen king goes here let's see who can tell me the answer for this one i go queen to d3 and I got these two blocked, right? The king has only one move, or actually two moves. All right, white to play and checkmate in one. Let's see if we can type it in. Let's go. White to play and checkmate in one move. Who can find a checkmate in one move for white? Ryan says he did this in chess school. That's right. Someone who went to chess school with you gave me this puzzle today. After, yes, queen h3 checkmate. Good job. 
It's too easy for you, Ryan. What if the king went to g4, though? What if the king went to g4? Now, we probably still play queen d3. And US chess school is, is a pretty nice school uh, run by international master. Well, I wouldn't say he's the only one, but yeah, he's one of the main persons, Greg Shahare. He organizes a lot of chess classes, and if you qualify for it, um, you can do classes with them. And it's all free of cost, and they're really, really good. So now king can go to h5, and I actually don't see the mate. But yeah, Ryan says e4, which actually kind of makes sense. Because now we got this one, we got this one, we got this one, all covered. Leaving the king to h4 is the only move who can tell me the last move. Ryan, I don't want you to say this because I think it's too easy for you. Let's see, someone else? Let's go for a checkmate in one move. I know you said e4. And I did play e4 after that. So thanks for helping me with that. All right, Armand says g3 and a bunch of g3. All right, very good, very good. We got it. Checkmate. Nice, nice, good puzzle. All right, guys, now um, too easy, okay? Now we're gonna get started. So get ready for the question. Let's reset this board. So the question for today is this. Um, in the year 2000, Gary Kaspro played a world championship match against Vladimir Kramnik in London, which he lost. Now, Vladimir Kramnik used a very, very popular opening in this match, which has a very nice name since that match. Who can tell me the name of this opening? If you are not so sure, you can even look it up quickly, but the first person will get a chance to get your game analyzed. Remember that the first person to answer this question. Gary Kasparov played a world championship match against Vladimir Kramnik in the year 2000. And the opening in which, okay, so it looks like we have an answer, right? I got one answer from Ryan. I am going to, um, well, I don't know if I can screen share and show it to you, but I, I guess I can talk about it. Ryan, uh, you are correct. Some of you are guessing different things. <laughs> London system, actually it was not. The Berlin Wall, the Berlin Wall is what it was called. Um, let me play some moves here so you might be able to see it. E4, E5. Actually, this is from black side, so I'm gonna play it out from black side. Knight C6, Bishop B5, and Knight F6. So this is, um, this became a quite a popular opening. Um, during this particular season, it was played a long time ago, but it became very, very popular during this particular season. So after knight f6, uh, white's move usually is castle, knight takes e4, and then I'm trying to remember the exact move order, d5. Am I forgetting this? Hold on, let me just go back to make sure I know the exact move order for this one. Yeah, it's d4. And oh, actually, rook e1 is also pretty popular in knight d6, yes. Knight takes e5. This is a newer version of this line, but d4 is the main um, line that they play. Let's go back to this. I'll just show you the basic endgame that it takes you to d4, knight to d6, bishop capture c6, pawn capture c6, and d takes e5. So what happens here is that we end up going into... Uh, yeah, Ryan, send me the game. Yes, you got it right. So you can definitely send me the game. And knight goes to f5, queen captures d8, king captures d8. So right out of the opening, we get, right out of the opening, we get a position where white is, um, I mean, black has lost castling. Black is not even castled, and uh, black's pawn structure is also a little off. So most players didn't really consider this to be that strong. But Vladimir Kramnik in the year 2000 studied this game, uh, this opening a lot, and played it against Gary Kasparov and... Uh, the interesting thing is Kasparov was not able to win even one single time against Vladimir Kramnik in this opening. So, exactly. Uh, Dinesh says this looks really bad. Actually, it does look bad, Dinesh, but, you know, this is a very complicated opening. I wouldn't say you should try it right away. It's very dynamic. The king has to kind of move back and forth to try to survive. But black's only advantage is the pair of bishops. 
And that's usually what it is. All right, so we're going to wait for Ryan to send his game. And if Ryan is, uh, if Ryan's game is done, we might be able to unlay someone else's game too. But let's see. Arman, are you boss pineapple? I actually didn't realize you're the one who's boss pineapple. <laughs> okay, I am, uh, Ryan, once you're done with the game, um, once you're done sending me the game, let me know. We'll take a look at it. We have a small group today, which means we all will get to answer. Um, I mean, I'll get to answer all of your questions, which is which is good. We'll have a, we'll have like a small group class with this video. Armand says, "Wait, did I not accept your friend request, Boss Pineapple? I might not have accepted because I didn't know who it was. Let me accept it right now. Let's go, Boss Pineapple. Let's see where you are." Connect, home, I'm not seeing it. I have to I have to figure out where you are to do that boss pineapple. I'm going to do it later on, okay? So, Florina says she's bored. Well, we have to wait for Ryan to send the game. Ryan, did you send me the game yet? We need to uh, get started. You have a couple of more minutes to send it. If not, I'll have to pass on to the next person. We don't want that, right? Florina wants to play a blitz game with me. Sure, let's do that while we are waiting, Florina, okay? Not a bad idea. Let's see if I can switch this to our chessboard. There it is. Not bad, okay. Go on, challenge me to a game. The only problem is I'm not, yep. Go on, challenge me to a game. And we can play a game, a quick game while you're waiting. Okay, might have adjusted the board a little bit. Need to change that more so we don't see that. Okay, that helps. I'm not seeing your challenge, Florina. Oh, there it is. Accept. Let's go. What should I do? Maybe I should play the scotch opening. I'm going to play my favorite, Rui Lopez. I'm glad she didn't play the Berlin Wall. Okay, so usually they cannot take this pawn because I have rook e1, but okay, she plays b5, I go back. Maybe a little bit too early. Which allows me to play this move, and maybe this move after that. Let's see if Florina can deal with the pressure try to attack okay so Ryan says he sent the games in the meantime so we're gonna finish this game really quick and then we're gonna go to that game Ryan okay she's she wants to play it safe castling okay I could take the knight and ruin the pawn structure or I could try to go in and try to go for like checkmate ideas i think we should do that right it's it's not fair to not try to attack the king you get a chance to attack the king you got to go for it bishop to c5 what do you think guys should we go for checkmate i like to try to do that Queen g4, that's right. Arman, I'll accept your friend request after the <laughs> thing. I have, I have to find. So I'm a little confused sometimes with the chess.com layout. So I'll have to go find Boss Pineapple and then I will definitely accept your friend request. No worries. Maybe um, one of the days you can challenge me. Uh, 
Looks like someone's in a spot of bother. Trouble in paradise. That's okay, she can hear the stream, that's fine. This time I'm just playing against her. It's her and me against each other. Okay, should we take the knight or should we drop in a check first? Because if we drop in a check, we win a piece, yeah? So let's do that. Okay, Arman, thanks for letting me know. I'm going to do that, okay? While we're doing that, I'm going to make sure I get Ryan's game and we're all set and ready. Maybe she can flag me in the meantime. Okay, so I have loaded Ryan's game and it's ready to do that. Let's do our on person. Ooh, F2. Danger. I guess Arman points out king h6 loses the king. That's right. <laughs> the king uh, was protected by the... All right, queen f5. I guess now time to maybe trade. I know I would like to keep attacking. Let's go back to e3. I was going to offer a draw to Florina. Should I do that? What do you guys think? No, I'm up a piece. That's right. But should I not be nice to my students? Should I try to be mean? Just try to win the game? That's a good point. Some of you are pointing out that's a rated game. Yes, that is going to be a little bit of a problem. If it's not a rated game, maybe I could have offered a draw. Okay, she still wants to break through. Okay, Florina, since we have to get going with the start of the class, I am going to give up my eight rating points and offer you a draw. Let's see if you want to accept it. Because I want to get started with the game. Go ahead and accept the draw. Offered you a draw. Everyone's saying no. What? She declined my draw offer. Okay. I guess we'll have to go through this. I like it though. I like the fighting spirit, Florino. The fighting spirit. Trade. I'm play I'm gonna play the boring trading game when I'm up a piece. I think that's that should be okay. It is okay to play the boring trading game. As long as I don't get back crank checkmated. Fifty seven seconds. They want me to pre-move. Okay, I don't even I don't even play that many blitz games, so I don't really pre-move. She wants to play C5. I'm not gonna let her play C5. I'm gonna be me. Controlling the dark squares, extremely important. Let's bring that rook in. Bring the next rook in. Let's go for that pawn. Well, 
Not really going to capture it. Well, now I'm going to. Okay, more pawns. Grabbing time. Send this guy in. And she keeps attacking me. Did I miss bishop to d7? Yes, I did, but it's okay. How about a draw now? Should I offer a draw now? All right, let's go for checkmate. Pre-move. How do I pre-move? I don't even know how to pre-move. All right, thank you, Florina, for playing this game. Maybe next time you have to challenge me to a three-minute game. That was a mistake, okay? Because we need to get back to our game. All right, so... All right, guys, so we are going to get started with um, the game analysis. So all of you, um, let's get back to this one. This game is, um, Ryan is playing black against a 1729, I guess, in live chess. So let's um, let's go on with the game. So Armand saying my pre-moves are not enabled. Looks like I need to know. Um, I, I am going to accept your request, Armand, but after the broadcast, okay? We're going to go take a look at this game, and we're going to analyze this game, all of us together. And then we are going to talk about it, okay? And then you can show me how to accept your friend request, Boss Pineapple. All right, a6, the classic knight arf. Um, we have the g3 setup. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about the opening here, Ryan. I, um, like I've already explained, I'm just here to give you the general ideas of the middle game, the planning, and of course, any other parts of calculation. You can all work on your openings using your databases. Um, I would usually recommend um, just doing it on a reference database using Chessbase. That's what I used to, so you should be doing it. Um, Armand, this is not the dragon. This is the knight arf. <laughs> I know you want to play the dragon, but let's move on. Okay, queen c7, bishop e3 and cat. Knight bd7, okay, fair enough. Queen d2 and castle. So up to this point, everything looks pretty logical, I guess. Um, the structure basically says that white has a little bit of extra space. And we have this breakthrough that usually is the most typical way to go here, right? Anytime someone has extra space, remember that there is always a pawn break as part of a plan, right? So d5 is the most common plan for black to break free. And white, of course, is not going to allow d5. And you can already see it's not an easy thing to achieve. And maybe even the rook will come in and I will put so much pressure on this pawn throughout the game. So let's see, rook d1 knight to b6 okay so typically you want to play b5 but i can see why b5 is not possible who can tell me why b5 is not possible in chat let's go black cannot play b5 unfortunately because of what move e5 thank you so if you play b5 here which is typically the most common plan to get the knight to c4 but the problem is the bishop is set up along the diagonal and e5 would be really bad. We have a classic discovered attack. I mean, I could probably take this. You could take my rook and I would take the knight. I would be down in exchange, but this won't be fun for black. And uh, some of you are pointing out knight to e5. I like that. Yeah, knight to e5 is absolutely possible too. Um, compared to knight to b6, both are actually playable. But I would still think that I want to play b5. So maybe rook b8 is not a bad idea. So Ryan. Because this move is kind of essential. I like b5. It's an expansion on this side. And uh, I, I typically like that. But having said that, I don't mind that you're creating this problem. So you play knight b6. Uh, I, I'll just tell you a, one common problem in this position. And then we'll go in, in depth. This is a move that usually is not, not safe. White usually does not play b3. Um, so in this what happens is that this pawn becomes a problem. I mean, the, not a pawn, the knight on c3 becomes a problem usually because once I start attacking on the c file, the knight on c3 has to be there. So usually white doesn't play the b pawn. But since you have put your knight on b6, I might actually consider playing that. 
Um, that's exactly what happened in the game. And bishop to d7 was played. And a4. So here I think white probably made a mistake. Who can tell me a good move for white? Let's think here. What should white try and do here? I think black is completely fine, by the way. There is nothing um, of any major, major problem. But white probably should have done this idea. Let's see what could that be. Knight to b1. Yes, it's possible. It seems a little passive. Maybe a little bit passive. So let's try to calculate. Huh, by the way, I think you might have missed a very strong response. So let's go back and take a look at that too. Guys, I'm going to pause this. I know all of you are suggesting knight e2 and knight b1, which is fine. Um, I'll quickly explain this. I like this idea because when I play rook to c8, you could play c4. Just enough time for you to play c4. Uh, but I guess black can deal with that too. Actually, Ryan might have missed a very strong move here. Let's see who can tell me a very interesting move for black. Black to play. When someone makes a move like b3, I kind of already pointed out some weaknesses. I think black has a strong move. I moved one step back instead of bishop to d7. In the game, Ryan played bishop to d7. But it looks like he has a pretty strong move. I'm hearing e5, ne um, Raghav. Okay, so guys, those who are in chat right now, we are actually analyzing a game, so I want you to be respectful to everyone else and focus on the game alone, right? No spamming. If you spam the chat, I might have to kick you out. Don't do that. All right, I'm getting a bunch of e5 and d5. Amit says d5, yes. Arman, Ryan, d5, yes, d5, not e5. e5 does not help so much, particularly once the knight moves. Um, I could have also gone to f5, in fact. I, I usually don't like f5 because of this double pawns, but here I don't mind because if you take and I take, my double pawn is compensated by the bishop. So I don't like this e5 move, guys. You have to be super careful about this one. But I do like d5. d5 is a big, big, important move. Um, I do have to ask you to explain, for those who said d5, it seems like you are um, getting into an isolated pawn or a situation like that. What if I just take? Why did you want to play d5? What is so good about d5? Let's see. Arman says f4 is coming. Okay. Outpost. That's right. Bishop to b4. Thank you again. So when someone makes a weakness, you have to immediately zone into it. Right. So the minute white played b3, that knight became a problem. So what you're essentially playing is trying to play bishop to b4. So d5 is just a discovered attack right again a discovered attack your actual threat happens to be bishop b4 to focus on the knight attacking on this pawn or trying to play e5 these are all like secondary threats yeah so bishop b4 seems extremely strong and looks like yeah i have to agree saying that black is probably close to winning here um i just want to see if someone can play the best response if i play well if i move the knight you're probably going to take the pawn um, actually, I'll continue with this. Pawn takes bishop b4. I'm going to defend my knight. Let's go. This is not still over. I think black is way, way better, but I don't think it's over. By the way, I see a computer analysis. I would strongly recommend that you shut that down. Right? This is not an analysis to find just the best move using the computer, Ryan. So please do not use computer evaluation, particularly for this session. You need to try to figure out moves on your own. You need to play moves on your own. Okay, so that's the most important thing to learn. Okay, that's fine, but don't look at it in general for everyone, right? I want you to come up with your moves on your own. It's so much easier when we analyze with the computer, but when we actually play a game, it's a lot more difficult. So, knight captures d5, and at this point, I think my only move maybe is bishop to d4. And it's still not over. What would you do here? Let's see who can finish this off. By the way, one thing that I noticed is um, a lot of you gave me one move answers. Okay. So when I ask you some questions, try to calculate some variations too. E5. I like that. Right. Again, throughout this point of the sequence, we are focusing on this particular knight. And it has two defenders. You cannot really touch the knight on e2, but you could certainly play this move. 
Um, what if I take it further and say, okay, actually, I'm going to play this move. Bishop captures d5, knight captures d5, and then I'm going to play this. And assuming you play e5, I'm going to take it. So I can play queen captures d5 after that. Roman says e5, bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop e3. Okay, so we got to this point. So you play queen takes, and I play queen takes d5, and the final move would be bishop captures c3. I know some of you are trying to answer this, but bishop captures c3. What this does now is I'm just protecting my queen. So I'm basically up a piece. So I'm going to go back all the way to our variation. So when you play a game, if you're playing the Sicilian, there's something that we have learned today, and I want you to keep an eye on this particular thing. If you are a Sicilian player, if you're playing Sicilian as black, or if you're playing Sicilian against the Sicilian as white, right? The Sicilian defense is, of course, e4, c5. What you would usually see is a, a semi-open c file. And it's extremely important that white keeps that pawn on b2. I know early on I was suggesting that I might play this because you played the knight on b6, which is not the most common square for the knight. The knight goes to usually c5 or e5. But yeah, you went to b6, I was thinking of doing that, but b3 immediately has a chance to play d5 and bishop b4. So Ryan, that's something that we missed in this game. And let's let's go forward and see what, what could be done. So bishop d7, a4, okay? So, um, okay, now I guess rook e8. I mean, rook c8 clearly is a problem. Knight goes back to e2 and a5. Not sure if I am a fan of this move. Who can tell me why? What's um, the problem with a5? You're still talking about d5. Yes, I think d5 is still very much possible. But now, I don't know how effective it, it would be. It might not be, it might not have the same effect. For one reason is that I also always have bishop takes b6. Yeah, that's that, that might rid of one knight, which is supposed to go to d5. So someone here, Amit, points out that knight b5. That's right. This is a square I don't like to give up, Ryan. I do not want to play um, a5 because I'm giving up b5 square permanently. So you have to be a little careful, even though I'm not sure if I can play right now. So if I play right now, actually, it's still possible. Watch this. Bishop takes b5, pawn takes b5. This pawn cannot be touched, even though it looks like I have a multiple attacks because the knight on b6 is hanging. So I cannot do anything yet. And winning or um, getting this pair of bishops would be a very useful thing for um, for white, here, right? So Ryan, you're playing the Sicilian. Again, keep in mind, a5 is a very anti-positional move here. You don't want to do that, okay? White plays queen d4. Ooh, I, I mean, you came back to win this game, but it's beginning to look a little mm, iffy. <laughs> Knight a8. If we have to play knight a8 in any position, I'm going to be like, hmm, careful, careful. So your opponent played f4. So actually, this is a good point um, where I feel like most players go wrong. So maybe let's pause to find out what white should be playing. Let's see if you can tell me what white should do. I feel like white has a great position right here, but most players probably don't understand what to do. Who can give me a move for white? What should what is white's problem? I'll give you a small hint. I want you to think about what white's problem and then try to fix it. That's the only way you can find a good move here. This knight is totally out of play, so you have all the time in the world. E5 try to break in. Unfortunately, E5 drops a pawn. Um, who suggested E5? Let's see. I think Dinesh, you suggested e5. I'm going to take the pawn. I don't know. Well, knight to b5. Again, you're dropping the pawn on c2, guys. I want you to remember that. You are dropping this pawn now. I will capture it. You cannot give that up just like that. Ryan, I want you to focus on the game and give me some analysis. So I'm asking a question to say, what is the best move for white here? I mean, best move in the sense, what do you think should be a good idea to play here? The problem, I'll give you a hint, is Arno says bishop to g5. Not a bad idea, Arno. I think you're trying to take on f6. So you want to take on f6 and maybe try to take on d6. Not a bad idea. 
but I'll just tell you um, I'm hearing DeFi from Hunch okay DeFi the problem is do you have enough well actually DeFi is black smooth where I was asking white smooth first yeah attack the black king you don't have an immediate way to do that I'll give you a simple hint the problem you're facing is this file you cannot move the knight because the pawn on c2 is hanging right I'm just going to play a couple of moves to show you let's say I can play this move and not lose that pawn and let's say black play some random move you play I'm just showing this as an example let's think about this position I just achieved one tiny change in the position I moved the pawn from c2 and I put it on c4 and that's going to be a big big difference so let's go back here to move that pawn you need to move the knight but to move the knight you need to protect that pawn because that pawn's hanging and that's all you need to do so a move like rook d2 would be a good idea rook c1 i think is a little too passive i don't mind rook d2 yes and d5 is still not possible now you can definitely play knight b5 if you want to because i don't mind getting one of the bishops right and now the knight is free to move and yes the knight is safe dinesh if you were worried that the knight's going to be captured nope the knight on e2 is guarding it so we are totally fine there yeah so this is what i would think is a good move for white let's move on f4 was played on the game so imperfect focus was playing white and he played f4 seems like an aggressive move but i'm not so much of a fan of this because he's not solving this issue and on top of it it looks like he can play this but he might not be able to play this move why can white not play e5 who can tell me that another question we have a lot of interesting questions so let's see let's say black plays some random move i'm going to play h6 a free move i don't think white can play e5 why not what's the problem with e5 arman thanks for subscribing to the channel we have a lot of videos we have a lot of interesting videos and I'm adding more and more con content. Yes, you can watch it. This is meant to be for you guys. This is for our students. And of course, it's meant um, a lot of these videos would be made public for everyone too. But today's session is only for our students. Um, it was black to play Ridima, but I played a temporary move for black to ask all of you. So I kind of made h6, which is a totally useless move. I want to know why white cannot play e5. See, this whole idea of f4, I think is basically to play e5 and i just wanted to catch a quick point here to see if you just give me a free move can white play e5 let's go guys what will black play come on you can find this it looks like e5 might win the game All right, perfect. I do like knight to g4. Very interesting. Um, I also think I right, just quickly missed a, missed a move. There is one mistake I did, guys. So I'm going to just uh, be square with you guys on that. E, after e5, probably this is the best move now. Um, you guys are right. I was actually just quickly thinking that I could take, take and play bishop c5, which is not possible, unfortunately. <laughs> I missed that you can just take queen takes c5. Um, because queen takes c5, queen takes c5, bishop takes c5, rook takes c5 would lose a piece for black on f6. So, yes, knight g4 is definitely trying to get a strong bishop. But I think this is still very crazy calculation. After pawn takes, you probably have to take this. Because you don't want to lose your uh, queen. White will capture on d6. That's exactly what we're calculating, Ryan. So it looks super interesting because now I could take on e3, but you could take on d7. So we will have a rook for two pieces situation here. After queen takes d7, I probably can play knight takes like f1. I have to say that white's still much better. So I have to take back my initial stance of e5 is not a threat. <laughs> e5 is a threat apparently. So beware, be careful of e4, e5. Ryan, you played rook to d8. Interesting. Can I still play e5? What do you guys think? 
the same version now might not work because the bishop on d7 actually is guarded for black so um it's not a bad idea oh by the way arman has given me an interesting move to look at i'm going to quickly check through this after h6 e5 knight g4 pawn takes bishop takes queen takes knight e3 queen d7 and he wants to play queen to c5 arman unfortunately this is not good enough he wants to play queen c5 to set up a discovered check on the queen can anyone take care of this threat <laughs> who can come up with a simple threat to maybe stop this yes i think that's pretty easy right arman just because we have a strong threat that doesn't mean it's the end of the game you have to keep thinking about your opponent's resources too so this is definitely not going to work after queen d4 i think white's still better all right guys we're going to go back to our main position which is rook fd8. We'll take a look at rook fd8. By the way, this is a nice game, um, Ryan. I think it's it has a lot of forcing uh, sequences that we can calculate. I like everything except this one, of course. <laughs> Not a big fan of that. All right, let's see rook to d2. But I want to look at e5. What happens after pawn captures? Pawn captures. Now, can I do something with this, with this discovered attack? You guys think I can do something with this? Not so sure, right? So for example, if I move the bishop to attack the queen, you might not even move the queen. I can, there's one option of just sacrificing the queen and playing pawn takes f6, rook takes and pawn takes e7. But there is another really strong move. Let's see who can find the best move. Now I do see a very strong move for white. What should white play here, guys? I don't know, Ridima. Well, try a move, Ridima. It's okay. It's okay if you don't uh, find the best one, but you can find something. Queen g4. I'm not so sure I will put my queen on g4. The knight will capture. You don't want that, do you? Queen g4 might not be the best option. What else can we do? Yes, that will be knight takes g4. Come on, guys, let's see. Where can the queen move? What would be the best sequence for the queen? Queen a7 looks, looks like it's too much. Probably wouldn't go there. Queen f4, thank you. I would probably pick queen f4 because I have this file, but I have to tell you, it's still not the end of the game. What I noticed is if the knight moves, you got queen takes f7, which is awesome, right? That's why you need to find the best square for your queen when you move out of this kind of an attack. But black probably has this, oh, that would be bad in a blitz game, guys. Luckily, I'm not playing a game. Rook takes d1. I mean, if I take with a knight, uh, one of the problems could be this. And so basically, black just doesn't even move the knight. Continuously black is doing some counter attack, right? So if I move the knight queen takes f7 would be a problem But black is not even moving that every move black played rook takes d1 now black is playing bishop takes g2 And after king takes g2, maybe I can even play queen takes. Oh my god me with my mouse drops I'm not playing queen c c4 um, I could play queen c2 or I could play queen c6 check I'm trying to figure out queen c2 could be interesting Saying that I'm hitting this knight uh, But this is probably, I mean, we, we probably got carried away too far. I'm going to go back in just a second, but I just want to point out this another cool variation. Pawn takes, if you take, I could do this move and force you to take here and then take here. Probably very dangerous because you're threatening queen takes f7 and you're also threatening rook to d2. And in this whole time, look at this. Look at this poor knight not really adding any value so black can still survive but queen d5 check is possible black can still survive but i'm not going to go too much guys let's go back to the game let's not get carried away so rook to d8 was played and i think it's a fair um idea to stop this whole e5 by the way there was also knight g4 still 
which is what we had talked about early on. Pawn captures, bishop captures, queen captures d6, knight captures e3. Now look at how the useful rook on d8 is defending these up. This is going to make a difference, right? Because if you play queen takes, rook takes, we are left with a nice little knight fork. And you're going to win material. So um, maybe just e5, knight g4 is still doable. All right, let's go on. Rook d2 was played in the game. You got the knight out in the end game. That's good to know, Ryan. Finally, I'm happy. I'm happy to know that. Knight to g4. Very nice. I like this move. And I think Dinesh pointed out early on that this is a strong bishop. Again, this is a general pointer that I want all of you to know. If you're playing the Sicilian as black or if you're playing against the Sicilian as, um, as white, the e3 bishop is usually a lot more important than the light squared bishop. That light squared bishop is definitely good, but this bishop, guys, just keep that in mind. If you can get that bishop for the knight, that's it. That's usually already like up like half a pawn. So that's that's a great start for black. Why? Because the light squares, I mean the light squares are usually controlled by the pawns. They're still there. But the dark squares need the bishop. The bishop is a must and that needs to take care of it. So knight g4, Ryan, I really like this move. I think this is probably where you're really coming into the game. And white is playing rook fd1. Man, that seems like he is fearless. Yeah, I don't think this is 0-1 yet, Armand. You cannot keep saying 0-1 for all the positions. There's plenty going on here. Okay, in the future, yes. All right. But I think white definitely should have taken care of this threat a little bit better. I don't like rook fd1. Who can tell me a simple sequence? I think black is now getting close to decisive advantage. What should black do? I like that option. White wants to rip the king open with rook d1. Well, I'm not sure Dinesh white is opening whose king. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. I think black has multiple great moves here. I'm already seeing some of the moves being suggested in the chat. I see all sorts of problems. Let's start, take a look at this diagonal. Seems like a big problem. Let's take a look at this diagonal. Seems like a big problem. <laughs> so this looks like this is a super dangerous position for white. The only question for black would be to decide what is the best way to continue. Uh, I'm just seeing e5 and I'm seeing d5 and bishop c5 ideas. I'll tell you both are there, but probably bishop to um, bishop to f6 is not a bad move. That's what was played in the game. The other one that Arman was talking about, I'll tell you, I'll show all of you is this to achieve bishop to c5. Not a, not a bad idea. So both seems good. So bishop f6 was played. e5 was played pawn captures pawn captures and knight captures so white is trying to get to save the knight which makes sense because if the queen had moved there is a direct capture yeah so i just have the queen and the rook defending it that's already simple enough um so this is going to be an easy win with bishop oh, i mean easy win if the queen moves so white found the knight's move e5 yeah so white plays e5 and says i will Try to do a discovered attack on the knight. So what this does is it forces black to take with the knight. I would have liked to take with the bishop so I can win this knight. But I am forced to take with the knight. But still, white's position is miserable. Now if you come back to the initial mistake in the game, I hope all of you remembered that very, very early in the game, white played b3. And not only did white play b3, white did not move that knight out of trouble when this pawn had to be saved remember how we how we always talked about this pawn going to c4 and the knight going back that never happened and i think white's paying a huge price for it all right so knight takes and queen e4 and ryan says he fell for a trap I'm not sure what the trap is yet but it looks like ryan's position is completely fine Queen e5, who's from 
Okay, I'm not going to be answering all those random questions in chat. I guess I will answer the questions about the game. All right, Queen e4, I guess black's most natural move seems like bishop c6. Seems to be a fair move, Ryan. So you played that. Seems reasonable. Rook takes, rook takes, rook captures, and queen captures. So we have traded all the rooks, and black is up a pawn. Now, I'm usually a big fan of this structure because... 4 versus 2 usually means that in the end game, I will have two connected pass pawns, right? So you have to remember that when I go to an end game with just up one pawn and I have that one pawn separately, it's not decisive enough, right? But if I have them together, connected pass pawns, right? White will also get a pass pawn. That's okay, but it's only one. White gets one pass pawn separately here. Black gets two connected pass pawns on the other side. So... I like this kind of switch in the structure, and you guys have to think about that too. And time to celebrate, knight to b6. Yay, the knight is out. Like Ryan promised us, the knight eventually did come back in the end game. And uh, Ryan, the only question is, do you not want to take the bishop maybe first? Maybe bishop captures g2, king captures g2, and then might have been a better option. The only reason is, can white kind of ruin black spawn structure? I mean, I wouldn't say ruin, but at least can white do something to black spawn structure, guys? What do you think white can do? Black is up a pawn, Armand, that's true. So black is definitely better because black is up a pawn. I'm not questioning that. But even when you're up a pawn in lots of end games, you have to have the right technique. You have to bring up the right technique to be able to win the game. So I, I was just asking, can white ruin black spawn structure a little bit? I think there is a move that white um, can play. And I think if black plays knight to c6, so bishop takes, pawn takes would create that I said a pawn. You could take with the knight, but I think maybe knight e4 is a little annoying. Or maybe knight b5. Probably knight e4. I don't mind putting my knight in the center of the board. So... Also, why do I need to retreat my knight? Yeah, my knight's in a great square. So I would have probably just taken bishop takes g2, king takes g2, and then gone knight to b6. So I can leave my knight on e5 in a strong position. Okay. Knight b6 was played. Bishop to d4. And your opponent is playing some dangerous moves. I could play knight g6, but okay, he can play bishop takes f6. Fair enough. He's putting some pressure on the knight on e5 okay let's see what ryan did bishop takes g2 king takes g2 seems reasonable knight bd7 okay i don't like that move you are up a pawn i want you to play aggressive i don't want you to play passive what should black play here let's only think of aggressive moves i mean you're up a pawn your opponent's king is open knight to g6 is possible but runs into bishop takes f6 Wait, actually, no, you're right. Knight to g6 is possible because knight takes f4 is a check. What I was talking about is this move. I was initially saying this might be possible, but nope, that is a check. So you'll have to take it back, and I will just take your bishop back and be up a queen. But knight g6, most likely I will move my queen back. And again, a little bit of a retreat. Let's try something else, guys. Arnav says knight to d5. Good job, Arnav. I like knight to d5. Okay, queen to d5 check hunch is not going to work. There's a knight on c3. I do want to play that, but I cannot. Knight to d5. Why not use an active move? Our knight is in a great place um, with a tempo. I think these kind of moves make a huge difference. You have to try to do that, okay? Because if knight takes, queen takes, you get the same kind of position. You didn't even have to move this. You centralize your queen... And uh, you basically have a, a better version of the end game. Now let's take a look at your move. You did save the knight, but your knight on d7 is not doing great now. Bad position, right? My bishop on d4, on the contrary, is doing good. You also don't have queen d5 ideas anymore, right? So uh, someone's Arman, you're not going to be up a piece after knight g6. I think you need to realize that the bishop is defended by this knight. After knight g6, I can just move. So you have to pay attention, right? The knight will just take back. There is nothing you are winning 
as a piece in there okay so make sure you're looking at all the captures or all the defenders so let's see what happened in the game knight bd7 so um just a side note for all of you in general i've seen a lot of players get to a winning position and then play a little passive i'm not sure if ryan did that in this game but except this move is a little passive so just remember that if you played a certain way to get to a certain position continue playing aggressive right it's very important that we do that knight to b5 now black pieces are getting a little aggressive it's not comfortable for me so knight to g6 another um possibility for the queen to get in so you're letting queen to d6 now look at this position everyone compare it with the position we talked about i'm just going to quickly highlight this too strong very good strong so suddenly white's pieces are doing great which was let's compare that to knight to d5 this position i would say black's position would be much much better right so again a simple emphasis of playing active bishop e7 yes probably a good move would force the queen trade with queen c7 actually the queen is almost trapped would have been really nice <laughs> bishop e7 Ritima, that's right and this queen has nowhere to go all of these are guarded everything is guarded no except this one lucky if not for that move queen trap but okay bishop e7 queen c7 and i think black is still up a pawn and should have a very good chance of winning this unless i lose the pawn here which i doubt yeah because queen takes knight takes and i always have b6 to save that pawn at any point bishop to e5 so ryan when your opponent has the most one most aggressive piece you have to deal with that bishop e5 is unfortunately not dealing with that the right way bishop takes knight takes now is the queen still on d6 the answer is yes it shouldn't be it's your opponent's most active piece and you should have gotten rid of that and the way we saw was bishop to e7 right we talked about bishop e7 that's the way you can get rid of that queen out of the d6 square right so you need to take care of your opponent's active pieces bishop takes e5 knight takes e5 and the queen still is there knight e d4 so now i have three active pieces but the knight endgame is still supposed to be good looks like things ended really quickly here let's see how that ended pawn to h6 knight to c7 interesting so white is trying to be super aggressive i might have just traded this knight off by playing knight f3 maybe so your knight on e5 is kind of folding things together so maybe knight f3 might have been a better option if knight f3 what do you think black should do i think black is still winning because black's extra pawn and white sweet king should should finish the game off but let's see what you guys do if i play knight f3 what would you do Uh, or no, f6 is definitely not safe. You're dropping the pawn on e6. You don't want to do that, right? If you play f6. Ridima, you like this endgame? I'm glad. Because black is up a pawn, but black's piece is a little weak. But I would say everything is compensated because this king is also weak. So, knight takes f3. Fair enough. Knight takes f3 is possible. After king takes f3, what do you do? This pin is really dangerous and bad. Unless you can get out of it. Can we get out of it? Should be an easy way to get out of pin. You have queen f6 check. Thank you. That's right, Ryan. And when the king moves, you can always play knight e5. So, you see how I pointed out this king is weak and that's a problem? So, even if I end up going here, all these pawns are weak. But this king is too weak, so this is just going to be super problematic for for white to deal with that. So that's why I said the king being weak is going to be a big, big problem for white. So let's see what happened. After knight c7, queen g5 was played, and knight db5. Interesting. I guess white is trying to kind of play with active pieces, but you have to realize that 
at this point the so-called active pieces have become pieces that are out of defense this king is in danger and those pieces are far away they were supposed to be closer and defending and i'm not even sure if they're attacking anything it's like a great place it's like oh outpost let's let me put the knight over there and uh, i'm not attacking anything right uh, so i think this is this is really a problem and after queen c1 can you not play queen d3 ryan maybe queen e3 is a little stronger i like this idea of just getting in there i know you want to go after the pawn um but i think queen e3 just goes after the king i would definitely definitely play queen e3 but let's see how your opponent ah so the anticlimactic um blunder white played queen to d3 and ryan of course found the most brilliant way to win the game not an easy move you should all probably think a lot before you find this next move the knight moves in l shape yes and it takes the queen and i guess like ryan pointed out his opponent um resigned it was a nice game to review uh ryan i think we all learned a very very interesting thing so we have we have learned a few things about the sicilian defense so hopefully to sum up the main parts of the game white's first mistake is i'm going to go back all the way to this point to just kind of reinstate what was going on. The first mistake for white is b3. That kind of came back to um, haunt him for a while. That was always a problem. Black's mistake was a5. So Ryan, this is what you need to figure out. Well, not a great idea because that sent your knight to a8. But white never played this. And this was um, just like a bad pawn. White had to save that pawn, move the knight. Try to play c4. For those who have studied this structure, this is called the bind structure. If you get the pawn on c4 and e4, that's going to be much, much stronger. So the bind structure would have been good, but white never did that. So since white did not realize that this was a problem, he ran into trouble with this eventually. So bishop f6 eventually was a strong idea. And after winning the pawn, I think the rest is pretty straightforward. Okay, so that was a good game. Let's see. Um, I guess Ryan and Florina have gotten the game analysis last two weeks. Good job, guys. You have uh, the group. You have to do better, guys. Come on. You have to know your um, chess history with the question. Okay. Ridima has a question for me. Go on, Ridima. Yes, I'm going to answer Ridima's question. And then we will... Arman wants to play me in a blitz game. Boss Pineapple. I'll have to accept Boss Pineapple to play a game. But before that, let's see if Ridima has her question. Yes, Ridima, we are planning to do this every Thursday. We might sometimes open it for everyone. Sometimes we keep it just for ourselves to our students. But yes, the plan is to do this every Thursday. By the way, what were you guys asking me about my puzzle battle? I've never done some puzzle. I've only done puzzle rush, guys. I don't. I'm not so good at. Um, I'm not so good at this puzzle stuff. I probably have to start doing more of that. I only have done puzzle rush for three minutes or five minutes. That's all I've done. Uh, there is going to be challenge, guys. I know some of you want to play me today, but tomorrow we're going to do this. So tomorrow at six o'clock, we have challenge the coach. So we're all going to be there. We're going to have a few more coaches. And I am going to try to play tomorrow. Last time I only streamed. I was only talking about our um, coaches, other coaches playing. Tomorrow, I will definitely try to play against you guys. Arman seems very sad. And you will be able to challenge me there. The only thing I have to figure out is how to accept Arman's <laughs> friend request. 11.15 puzzle Dinesh, that's pretty good. I like that. Okay, Ryan wants to know, Ryan is asking Armand to do a puzzle battle. That's okay. Shweta, I'm guessing this is Tanishka. I did not realize you were here, Tanishka. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I guess that's a good place to wrap up um, this one. I'm glad 
you guys came in and got your um even if you don't analyze your own game remember this this will always be a good thing because for example today's game is a great thing to see that we have learned a new opening new ideas right so whenever you're free on thursdays come in you know just get some game analyzed middle game was your favorite part dinesh that's nice i would say mine or end game actually some people find it very boring but i like in games a lot too arman is in my team one more question so that will be the last question rudima go on what's your last question and arman i'm going to play you tomorrow don't worry bye tanishka Well, even for Carlson, it goes slow, Dinesh. End games are supposed to be a little slow, particularly the long grinding out end games. But end games are extremely important. You need to start there and then work your way backwards. Because if you play a strong middle game, that means you are taking your position to a favorable end game, right? So you need to know that first. <laughs> Ridima wants to know if she gets a game, uh, question first, but doesn't. You don't have to share your game, Ridima. It's not a must. You can happily come and answer your question. Um, I would suggest not answering the question first if you don't want to share the game, because we are kind of making this as a fun um, question thing. So if you don't want to show me your game, I would say you shouldn't be answering first. But having said that, no one should have a problem showing your game. Remember this: this is no secret. Once you get to a certain point, all your games are visible. You have to just study. You have to share it. You can make your mistakes, and everybody will learn the same way. Okay. Bye, Arno. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this up too. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I will see you guys next week. But tomorrow we will do the challenge against coaches. So hopefully, I'll see some of you playing against coaches tomorrow. Bye.